about what we put in our soap and why. There's a special word out there that people use to sell things to you, and it's the word, and it's a word that doesn't mean anything. It, there's no legal um, recourse of using it for on any product they want to use it on. And that word is natural. And what does natural mean? Well, it could mean anything. And claim it's natural, and it's just a buzzword. It's an advertising. I say this because it kind of irks me because um, when people hear the word natural, they trust that, I, I'm not sure what they perceive as natural, but it's not what you think usually. Now, is our, is our soap natural? Um, in the true essence of the word, it's, it's very natural compared to what you would buy in the store. So uh, when people are looking for a natural product, I think what they really mean is, is it a synthetic? Is it a chemical? Now here's the thing, you can't make soap without the chemical called lye. It's not possible. Look up the definition of soap. It is the combination of fats and lye. If people tell you that they don't use lye in their soap, run. That is not actual soap. They don't know what they're doing. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just telling you as somebody that's experienced with this stuff. So our first ingredient is our friend olive oil. This is our biggest ingredient in our soap. It is about 35 to 40% of the total recipe. Now, I don't want to disclose the exact amounts of my recipe because my recipe is really stinking valuable, all right? And as a business, I'm not going to sit here and tell you exactly what my recipe is uh, per measurement, but I'll tell you what's in it, okay? Fair enough, right? The second ingredient is coconut oil. Um, now, if you're allergic to coconut oil, I do make soap without it, but it is obviously a little bit more expensive because coconut oil is one of the least expensive parts. Now, here is a bucket of coconut oil. They've taken the label off of it, but it is coconut oil. Uh, they put the sticker over it. And I get it in these giant buckets like this from a restaurant supply store. The third ingredient that I use is either sustainable palm oil in the same size bucket, or I use lard or tallow. Now, I know that sounds really gross at first, but I have experimented over the last three years, and I was a chef for nine and a half, and I will tell you that lard and tallow makes the creamiest, most moisturizing, longest lasting, best and bubbliest soap out there. And I feel like palm oil is an inferior product compared to tallow and lard. And I know a lot of vegans don't want me to use the tallow and lard, um, and I can understand that, and the intention behind that is good. However, animals lose their habitats, and we affect animals. So, and it also comes from all, of, all of around the world. You gotta cut down the trees, and then you gotta ship it here. It's heavy product. So we're talking ton of, of gas and, um, and pollution in the air. You're, you're removing trees, which pollutes the airs. air. You're removing habitat from animals that may be endangered. Um, and it's just, it's a lot. So when you use tallow and, um, and lard instead, 99% of the time it comes from the United States. Um, often it comes somewhat locally. It makes a higher quality bar of soap. It's less expensive because the travel cost is, you know, is not there. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't remove a habitat for an animal. Even if we, even if we ate one-tenth the amount of animals we do now, which I hope is a goal in the future, you would still have lard and tallow to use up. We like to use up all the different parts of the animal um, and not waste that animal's life and respect that animal, right? So to me, as someone that loves animals, I honestly think it's better for the environment and for animals to use tallow and to use lard, and it makes better soap and it's better for your skin. Um, and I just feel as a soap maker that it, it's something to talk about. It's an interesting way to think about it. And I wonder what your thoughts are actually. So, oh, hi, Jason. Hi, Tammy. Okay, so let's talk about the next ingredient. I'm sorry I went on on a tangent there. So now we've gone over olive oil. We've gone over coconut oil, um, which is irreplaceable. It's so unique, coconut oil. It's extremely important. It has a stripping effect. Then you have the creaminess effect of the lard or the tallow or the palm, and it also hardens the soap to make it last longer. The last ingredient in our soap is castor seed oil. 
Um, what's castor seed oil? That sounds like something from 1922, right? That's something that they used to give the kids when they were sick and it tastes bad. And that's true. Castor seed oil is taken from just that, the castor seed. So it is a natural, uh, there's that buzzword, but it truly is a natural ingredient. It's an oil derived just like olive oil. And we only use about 5% castor seed oil in our soap mix. And why is that? Because you, a little goes a long way and the stuff is viscous. It isn't like other oils. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Um, and this is pricey stuff. Um, a gallon of this, okay, and I buy them in bulk. A gallon of this costs about 50, $60. I don't make soap without this stuff. This is actually, to me, the thing that cannot be replaced. You have to have, it's sticky. I'm opening it and it's like, it's like sticky, like honey. The reason you have to have this is because this is the special oil. It's like an emollient. And what it does is it creates a sudsing effect. It creates bubbles. The other oils like olive oil create healing. It helps with acne. It helps with all sorts of problems. And then we have the animal fat, which is the hardening and creamy, creamy effect. And then we have the coconut oil, which has the stripping and cleansing effect. Um, and this is why you don't want to use pure coconut oil soap because it's too stripping and drying, by the way. That's why you got to balance it. So people that sell you a pure bar of coconut oil, don't, don't buy that. That's like only suitable for laundry because it's too harsh. Okay. So I can't tell you how many people tell me they're allergic to coconut oil because some soap makers sold them a coconut oil bar and they have reacted. Of course they did because it's too harsh for anybody's skin. And then they're like, I don't want to ever use coconut oil. I can't tell you. I get it like every week. And that's not true. It just can't be used in such an overwhelming quantity. How thick that is. So I'll pour some off here. Okay, so you can see it. It's like a, a combination of like honey and oil almost. If um, you wanna always have soap with castor seed oil, and something else that I want to say that's super duper important. Here is my favorite recipe book for soap that I learned how to make soap on. I do sell it in my shop because people constantly ask me for it. People that are also um, looking to run a soap business and want to know, you know where I started. Um, this is the book I learned on and I do sell it. Um, it's by Jan Berry. This woman used to sell soap and now writes books. And this is actually one of the highest rated, if not the highest rated book on soap making in the entire, that, that's available out there. And I have a lot of soap making. Cold process soap, for example, which is what everybody makes that makes natural soap pretty much, except for some rare exceptions. Cold process soap, um, there's like hundreds of recipes. Um, you can take, you can use sunflower oil, you can use cocoa butter, vegetable can, oil, okay? You can use, you can vary the amounts. You can have eight ingredients of oil in your soap, or you can have one, just, just olive oil. So you take your oils and then you mix them with the lye chemical and the water and the molecules of the lye water and your fats that you've chosen. And you've, I've told you what my fats are, my four fats, my four oils. They merge together and saponify overnight and they heat up as they do this. And what happens is it's liquid, as you've seen, you see me make soap. Um, and then the next day it turns into a solid. So how does it do that? It goes that it goes through a process of saponification. And what that means is that each molecule of fat finds a molecule of the lye, the chemical, and it changes it and it alters it. And so by the time the next day you cut that soap, it's no longer lye and fats, it's soap. It's a completely different product. So you don't have to be worried or scared about lye burning you or, I mean, if you've used soap ever in your life, you've been, you know, soap is a product that's designed for the exterior of our body. The most porous organ of our body is the skin and the largest organ of our body is the skin. And our skin does absorb things. That's why external CBD works. First of all, okay, if you buy soap in a bottle, it's in a bottle, obviously. Okay, now here is, here's a product that I made. It's a bar of soap, it's a solid bar of soap. There's a paper wrapper. Okay, this is biodegradable, this is friendly for the environment, and it's made locally by local workers earning a living wage. When you buy a bottle of soap, you are mostly paying for this package, okay, the plastic, which is a lot of plastic, and you're paying for, I can't show you the label, you're paying for the advertisement and the brand 
that goes behind selling this and you're paying for the shipping of this to be made across the world in some mystery factory. And yes, it smells good, but what the hell is in it? I don't know. Okay. I don't even know because I can't pronounce half the sh**. All right. Does that mean it's necessarily bad? No, but it does have propylene glycol, which I would never, ever use because there's some uh, conflicting evidence out there that it's really bad for you. Um, it's got, uh, I don't know, let's see, sodium chloride, sodium benzenate, um, cocoa, cocoa metapropyl betatine, um, parath sulfate and sodium C12-13, and uh, water, which is... Um, it's, it's, I'm going to cover the name. It's, uh, well, I, I can't even, I can't even legally show you what this brand is because I could get in trouble for that. But the first ingredient is water. And if you don't believe me, go grab your bottle of whatever you have somewhere in your house. I know you got one. We all do. Even me, a soap maker, we've got something somewhere and read the first ingredient. And the first ingredient is actually plastic because it needs all that plastic to get to you. And the second ingredient is water. Um, and we won't even talk about what happens to the plastic breaking down the chemicals inside this bottle, what happens when it reacts to the plastic bottle, and then you're putting that all over your body. We won't even talk about that. But that's the thing to think about. And then it's got all this chemical. It's got alcohol in it. It's got red 33. It's got um, linol, linol. If you look at the ingredients here, it says literally olive oil, coconut oil, tallow castor seed oil, and phthalate-free fragrance oil. So let's talk about fragrance really quick. Fragrance is oftentimes where the problem lies. If, if you're buying really cheap fragrance, which again is what's in these big bottles, they have to make a profit, right? Um, some of these fragrances can be pretty toxic stuff. Uh, so we here, we have people with asthma, we have parrots and parakeets that are on site, and we can't expose our animals or ourselves to uh, harsh chemicals. So over the last three years, we have done a lot of research on uh, fragrances and essential oils, and we've rejected probably 75% of what we've purchased, which has cost me thousands, to be honest with you, but I am picky. So I have landed on a couple of brands I trust. And for example, Brambleberry, um, they have a statement, a detailed lab report available for all of their fragrances online at brambleberry.com. Candle Science, the bottom row there, their entire premise is on creating phthalate-free um, safe fragrances that are a EU standard. What does that mean? That means in the United States, we get away with murder when it comes to chemicals, and we all know it. There's no regulation. But candle science is different. They try to lean towards an uh, European standard, which they've, um, I can't remember if it's 200 or 400 at this moment, because I'm a little tired, but they've um, made it illegal to put two to 400 different chemicals in their fragrances and body products in, um, in the EU. So candle science is all about recognizing that and making that standard here in the United States available to us. And that's why I support candle science so much. So if anybody has any questions, Oh, I should say one more thing. I use fragrance oils and I use essential oils. I use both. And I use also, uh, what we call, combination oils, which is a mix of both. And why do I do that? Why don't I just use essential oils? Okay, for one, essential oils are extremely expensive, extremely expensive, okay? So like a bottle, I'm gonna show you. So this bottle here of rosemary, which by the way, tons of people are allergic to this. This is in the pine family. Um, this bottle here, okay, is probably 30 or $40. And if I were to make a loaf of soap, I would use two bottles of this. So that would be $80 of fragrance. And this is one of the most common allergies out there. So that's reason number one. It's extremely expensive. Reason number two, essential oils tend to fade in soap. There are some exceptions, like tea tree. However, 
they tend to fade. They're not designed to go into soap. Now, if you're putting them into melt pour soap, that's a different story. It'll probably stick around. And does it have benefits? Sure. But essential oils are technically not really something to be played around with, unless you really know what you're doing. Because they're a medicinal... Fuck. He almost died. This is what a, uh, a serious allergy to essential oil can do to a person. So I am extremely careful about putting especially pine oil. Thank you so much for joining me. Um... So that's one thing about essential oils. It's medicinal. Um, so you've got to be careful. I tell people, um, or excuse me, people tell me that they have allergies all the time. And the biggest allergy that they tell me about is pine allergies, rosemary, thyme, pine. Um, it's always essential oils. It's, it's never fragrance oil issue. So fragrance oils tend to be friendlier to people with allergies. Also, fragrance oils are designed to be in soap, which means that they're going to last longer and they're going to smell better. So most of the time, there are exceptions, okay, uh, like tea tree, like I said earlier. So this one here, Ragnar's Revenge, I make this. Okay, this has got um, all the ingredients I told you about earlier. But in addition, I put spirulina, um, green tea, real green tea and real cucumber in it. Um, but it also has a little bit of fragrance oil. It has essential oil and fragrance oil, essential oil of mint and a fragrance oil that mimics cucumber. But then it also has real cucumber in it. So this boosts the scent of the cucumber. So I'm using like all the elements and tools I have available to really make the perfect bar of soap. It has the natural ingredients, but then it also has some fragrance oil to push that scent out and keep it there so that when you get your bar of soap, you don't pick it up and go, it has no smell. And then you're disappointed. And then I get a three-star review. And then I cry. So we don't want that. So we use all the ingredients that we have at our disposal and we experiment. Sometimes it takes years to land on that perfect recipe. And if anybody has any questions, please let me know in the chat below. I'm going to be posting this on YouTube because a lot of people have been asking this question. And I hope that I was able to answer the question. Um, and it, when it comes to colorants, by the way, we use activated charcoal for our black all the time, which has got effects on the skin, which is very good. Um, this right here is activated charcoal. We also use oatmeal. And unlike some companies, we grind it up so it doesn't scratch you. Okay, so here's our bottle of Quaker Oats. I have it already pre-ground. I've already pre-ground, see, exfoliant. Um, and then we also have something called mica powders, which is for colors. Um, cheap mica powders, not only are they um, crap and you have to use tons of it, but good mica powder um, is actually synthetic. And the reason we buy synthetic is because it's way more powerful and we know 100% fact that children are not mining it in India, which is unfortunately what happens with uh, most mica powder. So we buy mad micas and nurture because I don't want any part of that. And yes, it is way more expensive. So when people say, oh, yeah, you know, you, your soap is expensive, you're going to get the best smelling with years of research made by a chef product, which is really hard to find with the best ethical micas and fragrances and essential oils. And sometimes they're even custom made for you, which is pretty incredible and rare. Um, and that soap is gonna smell better and it's gonna last longer and your skin's gonna feel amazing after you use it. Um, and the scent is gonna stay on you a little bit longer. Now skin is porous, the scent will go away because your skin breathes. There's no such thing as a soap that's gonna stick around for, for all day, that's not possible. OK, so that's why we make these little tins. I'll show you. We make these little tins that match the scent of our soaps, our customers' favorite soaps. And what this does is it extends the scent of your favorite soap all day for you. You could put it in your hair or your beard, a little bit on your clothes. So like, for example, here we have Rolo's Rise. It matches Rolo's Rise lavender chamomile soap and so you might notice that i have a lot of kitchen kitchen supplies around and that's because that's what i know as a chef so to me making soap is kind of like cooking and i try to keep it as close as to as food as possible because it's what i know 
it's what I love, and it's what's safe to be around birds and people with asthma and conditions. Any questions? I would love to have a dialogue about it. Um, I'm very curious uh, to know what you guys want to know. Thank you for your questions, and I look forward to answering any queries below. I'm Deborah Glaze, and I'm out. Three birds soap fall hollow.